for many years I felt pretty hopeless about climate change and the way the world is uh, looking for a solution makes me even frustrated. But about two years ago I was introduced by a project that, was, that gave me inspiration and a feeling of hope. And I was in a lucky position to meet a lot of people that are uh, linked to that project. And they showed me a lot of things about the climate and I hope I can share some things with you today and give you a different look about uh, the issue we're facing. Um, <coughs> we use uh, a lot of fossil fuels and therefore we have uh, a lot of uh, carbon dioxide in our, um, uh, in our atmosphere. And <coughs> um, the, the, the research has been done. Uh, they have looked on uh, ice in Antarctica and it works a little bit like year rings in a tree. You can uh, extract information from ice that tells you uh, about how in, in the past the, the relation between temperature and the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And what it tells us actually is that the current concentration of carbon dioxide will eventually warm the earth up with another 16 degrees from now on and the sea level rise will be 25 meters. This will happen in thousands of years from now. Uh, but it is going to happen if we don't do anything about the excess of carbon dioxide. So it's pretty catastrophic. I don't think humanity can survive this. And we need to act now because the window of opportunity to do something about it is rapidly closing. And what I see is that the current focus on climate change is really on renewable energy. So um, we're telling everybody we need to uh, have solar panels and windmills and electric cars, etc., etc., which is a good thing because if we continue with using oil and coal, this will be worse. But imagine if we would stop today with um, uh, emission of carbon dioxide. So we all have bought these electric cars and solar panels and we don't do anything about the excess of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This will still happen. So if we change our energy uh, demand, it will not, uh, 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 the, the way our energy sector works, it will not make uh, a solution. And I have another illustration of that. To show you our use of energy, it's always good to use less, and it's always good to use renewables, but it's not going to solve the problem. Because if you look at this square, if we would fill that now with solar panels, with the current state of technique, we can feed the whole world with all the energy they need. So we can live our lives, we have transport, we have uh, industries, we have, and it's just this. And that's because the sun is a huge power, uh, is a huge source of energy. So this tells me in the future, we will always find a way to extract that energy and, and use it. And then maybe you ask, uh, what is the real problem? The, the real problem is our land use. Uh, desertification is the real, issue of global warming today. And that's why I also put it on the um, inner desert in the Sahara. Because this is really illustrating um, the origin of the problem. On the left hand side you see a dry field. So it is not even a desert, it can be just an agricultural field with low groundwater tables and dry. And on the right hand side it's a saturated, so very wet and green area. And the 70% stands for the energy that is coming from the sun on that dry field is transferred for 70% into heat. So that's direct uh, uh, contributing to global warming. While on the other side, 80% of the solar energy is transferred into evapotranspiration, which is actually water that is evaporated from the soil and from the plants. So if we want to cool down the planet, we have to admire uh, much more vegetation and water in our areas and uh, avoid dry fields. Because <coughs> there's another thing, on the left hand side this water is actually gone. You can ask where is the water gone? Well some of it a little bit is even contributing to sea level rise. But the thing is if our earth warms up, warm air can hold more water than cold air. So a lot of that water is also evaporated and stays in the atmosphere. 
And then there is this graph. Carbon dioxide is not the only greenhouse gas we have. We have several greenhouse gases that contribute to the greenhouse effect. And actually water is a much worse gas. So the contribution of water is, is more than two times bigger than carbon dioxide. <coughs> now, there is a very old system, it's called photosynthesis, which solves actually everything. It's plants, it's vegetation. <coughs> if we massively regreen the world, solar energy will be transferred into vegetation, biomass. We harvest greenhouse gases from the atmosphere because carbon dioxide is not a poison, it's a building block for life, like water and all the other nutrients. And water will infiltrate into the soil, groundwater tables will come up, and we can really make a change. And that we can do it on a large scale is already demonstrated in China, and this is the project I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, about 20 years ago, they started on the Lus Plateau in China to regreen their area. And it was not for the climate, but it was uh, especially to control erosion and secure food and do something against poverty. So the social economic benefits from these kind of projects are enormous. And to give you a little bit of an idea of the scale, it's the size of France they have been able to regreen in a completely sustainable way. So no chemicals whatsoever, just hard work and weight. And <coughs> well, I can tell you much more about it, but maybe later in the break. But you might also think, okay, what can I do? What can I do? Well. What I tell you on the global scale also happens in very small scale, also in the city. This is a square, and what you can see on the right-hand side is the temperatures, is that on a rooftop, it's a hot day, it's 37 degrees, while on top of the trees, it's only 27 degrees. So what I just told you on a large scale also happens on a very small scale, heat stress of the city. So this is actually my last slide I want to give, you, give to you. <coughs> If you have a garden like this and you are in a, you're thinking about buying solar panels to, um, to save the world, well, if you want to save the planet, please invest in regreening your garden and in the groundwater table under your house. Thank you very much. Thank you.